Okay, boys and girls, I hope that you're having a great weekend. It is Sunday here. It's supposed to be pizza eating time, but instead I'm recording this video. This has been requested by a lot of members of the Discord group. And also with the other content that's on the channel, uh, I've covered most of the basics. The course has covered uh, most of the basics. There's a big upload coming for the course. There's nine more videos coming that are more of an intermediate and advanced level stuff. So check that out. Um, I just wanted to cover a topic that a lot of people have been asking about. This is a starter video, it's just to get your feet wet with it, but we're going to talk about APIs, what they are, and why you would want to use them with your BAS bots. Okay, so APIs, um, if I remember, application programming interface, but let's just call it um, APIs. It's a way that a, let's keep it really basic, that a site has made it possible for you to access their data. They want you to access it. They have built an API for you to uh, send commands and you'll get data back or you'll be able to send data to them. Okay, why do we need this? What is the point of us getting into APIs? Well, as I said, the APIs are um, endpoints. We're going to talk about that in a minute. That these websites, most of the big sites have APIs for you to use. Okay, They want you to use them to access their data. So I know a lot of you guys are using BAS to scrape data. And, you know, And all the examples I've shown you stand as brilliant. But if there's an API, then it's just far, far better to use the API because they're giving you the data in a format that's really easy to um, manipulate into variables or you know, to save, etc. We're going to get into that. Okay, so my rule of thumb is, is this. Uh, look for an API for the website. If they don't have any, um, there's a topic that's going to be covered in the course that's really, really uh, gold, which is lots of websites have hidden APIs, but that's, that's for the course. Um, and then the third way, if you have to, then scrape, scrape, build in the scraper, that's fine. But the main point here is if they have an API, then use it. Okay, so what can we do with an API? Well, we can grab data from a, from a website. So if you've been doing any kind of scraping, this is really going to help. Okay, we can then put that data into variables to use with your bots. We can save the data into databases. We can then put it into our own website. There's so much we can do with it. Okay, the other thing that you can do, there's Let's keep it really simple with the API. You can get the data, so you can make a request to grab certain data. And the other thing that you can do is do a post request. So this might be an API, let's just say you could uh, post some data or send some data to a serv server, and that will maybe update your Twitter feed or uh, send a DM or you know um, make a Reddit post, whatever the case, okay? So there's get and post, okay? They're the two I want you to remember for now. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to say is don't be scared. We're talking about APIs and get requests and posts. Once you get the hang of it, it's a lot easier to use an API than uh, building a whole scraper. Okay. So let's lead by example. Let's get to it. So there's a free API that you can use just so you can get used to it. It's called themildb.com. Okay, I'll put the link in the description. And what it is is a free test API for you to use, and you can use these endpoints. An endpoint is just a URL like this one. Okay, and when you make a GET request to that with the information, it's going to send back uh, some data in JSON format, which we'll discuss. Okay. Um, with anything that you've requested. So for instance, I could send a get request to this URL, changing this to let's say pizza, and it's gonna give me all the details it's got in its database about uh, the pizzas they have, okay? So I should open with this. This is the meal database, and it just has a database full of different meal ideas, okay? So you could have this endpoint as all this and then at the end pizza it's going to bring back any pizza recipes it has uh, steak you get the idea and then you can use this one list all meals by first letter so you could use this and have this as A or B or C and it's going to bring back all the different foods that it's got with um, them so you can play around with this it's free there is some that are, you need to be a patron to use but to test and get used to APIs you don't need any of them in fact, we're just going to work with the first one here. Okay, 
So let's bring this over to Bass. Now, all I've done here is I've made a resource called the search term, which is just, okay, let's actually get rid of it <laughs> so I can show you. So all I've done is new resource, I called it search term. Is tr oh my goodness. See, this is what happens when I've had no Sunday pizza. Search term, okay, and it's a fixed string. Just next and finish. So why am I doing that? So that we can have this and replace this with the resource we just made called search term. So we can put anything in that box. Pizza, steak, whatever you guys, whatever you guys are eating these days, whatever your mum's cooking for you. Right, so then I'm going to save. I'm going to hit record. I'm not even going to use that to start with. I'm just going to put pizza in there. But Okay, so now let me show you what I've built. In fact, let's just uh, let's get rid of these two. I'm going to save that. Right. So let's get rid of all this so I can show you. So the first thing that I want to do is you come over to the HTTP client and we're going to make a get request. In other words, we're going to say to the server, give me this, get it. We want to get this. So get. Now, what do we want to get? Um, I'm actually going to put this. I'm oh, doing a bit of HTML there. Okay, put that there so I remember how the format is. Right. So we want to grab this string because we want to search for a meal by name okay I'm just going to grab that and then I'm going to put that in here but I'm going to change this endpoint this bit here sorry this is called an endpoint sorry this whole URL but where it says s for search equals I'm just going to put pizza in here okay for now and that's it press ok and it's going to make that request to that endpoint Okay, and let's look here in our sniffer what we got back. Okay, so what we got back is this. You might think, what the hell is this? Can I make it bigger? Yeah. So this is JSON format. So what you have is a key and a value. Key and a value. And it's giving us back all this data. Okay, so we've got everything about this pizza. So this pizza name is a Pizza Express Margarita. Okay, uh, and it's got so much, it's got the ingredients, uh, so much. It, and this API is a bit funny, isn't it? It breaks down every ingredient into a key and value. So it got, it's quite big. Okay, uh, yeah, so you can take a look at this. This, it brings it back in JSON format, and I'm gonna show you how we can work with that. So, Let's come over here, and you'll see why this is relevant. I'm not saying that you want to uh, use food recipes in your database or uh, for your bots, but this is a great way for you to get used to using APIs, and this can be used with the API for all the ma major social networks. All, all the uh, sites that have an API, which is a lot of them, okay, have documentation, and they'll have something like this, all the endpoints that you can use. They're quite easy. You just copy copy and paste them like I did to the one that you want to use for this search meal by name but you, we could have used any of these okay so then we have our data so it's in the content okay so we want to turn this what it's brought back and put it into a variable so we're going, I'm going to save it I'm going to call it save content and automatic that's fine okay now this is the bit that you need to learn luckily for us, Bass recently, I think it was two updates ago, have a section called JSON. That's the format that the information's brought been brought back to us in. And that's the case with most APIs, we'll bring it back in what's called a JSON format. And like I said, a JSON format is a little is um, I won't get into arrays and all that in this. A uh, JSON format is for a key and a value. So a key, let me get all the keys actually. So Let's get all the keys from this save content. So get all keys. What's the object that we want? Um, it's the save content variable. And the query that we want to use is all possible elements for this. Okay. And we want to save it into a variable called pass JSON keys. You can call this what you want. 
Okay, so let's look at all the keys that it brought back. Okay, so these are the key keys the meal name, uh, the category, the ingredient one, ingredient two. It's got the image. You can bring back the picture of the meals to use in your bots. Uh, it's got everything. So these are the keys. Okay, so a key. And then what you have is get all values. So let's do the same save content. All possible values. Okay. I think there's a kids party next door. Goodness, so loud. Okay, and there you go. So these are all um, these are all the values. So the first one is the keys. So like ingredient one, ingredient two, ingredient three, and these are all the returns. So there's water, sugar, yeast. So it's kind of like uh, this could be. So that could be a key name and the value could be Dean. Do you see how it works? Key, key name and value. Okay, so let us get rid of this, get rid of this. So we've got that JSON stuff, all that information in the, the variable and object called save content. Okay, so um, that's all here. Do you see? Key, value, key, value. So obviously we don't want it all just, we only want probably some of this information, okay? And it'll be the same with all the APIs that you use. So just for this, I am going to get the pizza name, okay? So the key is string meal, okay? So in order to grab that, and Bass has actually done a really good, um, has done well with the documentation for this particular item, JSON. So if we go here and we want to get a value, sorry about all the noise. Um, so the object is the save content. So all that, all that stuff, <laughs> all these value and keys, that's what we want to work with. And what do we want to pass? Well, luckily for us, uh, you can press the readme here and it's going to tell you all the different ways you can grab the data but just through doing my own research um, I that's why I tried ah, has it saved now yeah this is how you get a key this is one way that you can get a key there's more than one but this is the way that I'm using you do that remember the one that I wanted to grab the key the value was for the key uh, string meal hit OK and what do we get? Pizza. Okay. Oh no, that's <laughs> sorry. Past JSON value. Pizza Express Margarita. Okay. So that's put that into the variable uh, called past JSON value. Of course, I could have changed this to let's call it pizza. Oops, if I can spell today. Let's try pizza name. Yep, I think that makes more sense. So let's grab the content. There you go. So pizza name, pizza express margarita. And you can do this with all the different values in there. Okay. Uh, once again, for this, the JSON get value. If you read the the read more, there's quite a lot of information on how you can grab stuff, the different formats, you can grab anything that you want. Okay. So you're able to grab the value of a particular key, or you can get the key. Uh, not the value and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. Let me just go over this again. And the other thing that I did where it says S and I'll put sorry S oh, Sorry S and then equals pizza. I could change this to our search term. Okay, so let's start again So save and then hit record and then Oh, we could leave it. As... What is he doing? What is he doing? Mistake. Okay, so then it will use that instead of the hard coded pizza thing. So make a get request to that endpoint. Let's see what it gave back. Press the icon here. And there you go. We've got some steak, steak Diane. Okay, and then if there's 
there might be more than one type of stake, then there would be a different key. So you get the idea. So then NISP again, let's change this to, uh, we could call it because we might get more than one, we can just call it food name, whatever makes sense for you. And then get that. And then the food name, steak Diane. Okay. So just to cover, <clears throat> excuse me, to go over what we've done, we've used an API. We've made a get request to this endpoint that will bring back um, the data in JSON format of anything that we search for. So we did pizza, we did steak. Okay, and it'll bring back all the uh, everything into an object in, in JSON format. Everything from the ingredients in that meal to uh, the image that you can use, so a link to an image, everything, uh, ID number. So it's like having the catalog for you. Okay, and there's all these different endpoints that you can play around with. Secondly, um, you, like I said, you can play with all these endpoints, but once you've picked one and you've made a search, you can get the information back and put it into a variable, press content, and then put it into any variable name you want, save contents, fine. Okay, and then by using the JSON option in your tool toolbox, we can get all the information we want from it. You might want to get all the key pairs, you might want to get all the values, you might want to get a value just of a certain key, maybe you just want the image, to use in your box, or maybe you just want the, the name or all the ingredients. Okay, there's lots of ways that you can get the information. And instead of me going through it all, if you just click on say, get value and click the read more, you can see the different methods that you can use to get it. Okay, now why is this useful? I, I totally understand that you, like I said, you might not want to be getting um, meal ideas with your box. You might want to use it for something else. Well. Most of the big social media sites have APIs. Most of the big, big sites out there have some form of um, Google, for many of its products have, has APIs. All you need to do is search for the service that you're trying to work with an API and see if you can find something. Not all sites have them, but a lot of them do. And it just makes a lot more sense in lots of cases just to hit the API, get the data straight back. You're not gonna get banned unless you make too many requests, but that's a story for another day. You'll get the data back and you can work with it instead of building a scraper, working with proxies, you know, finding all the elements and the elements might change. With an API, you know where you stand. You're allowed to grab that data. You're not gonna have any issues from the site. Okay, you can get that data back and work with it in your bot. Uh, once you've got the information back, you can sort through it, save it to a database, a text file, you can upload it to a web page, you can do all the great stuff that you normally do with bats. Okay, I have gone on long enough for a Sunday afternoon. I hope you've got something out of this video. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, then check out the links in the description, check out the course, shameless plug. Join us on Discord so you can chat with other users and get some ideas. And if you need custom support or video packs, just let me know. Okay, that's me out. Peace.